the box came in pretty good. There's one little bump on the corner, but it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be anything here um, right underneath it. Um, so I guess I'm going to unbox it. Let's see if I can duck and get off from underneath this. The only thing that's going to, I guess I got to do this one time. Actually, everything looks, so far, everything looks decently packed. We've got, interesting thing also, there's no way on the packing slip to determine what, what which pr printer I have. So let's hope this is the right one. So I've got a checklist here. And actually, apparently, they sent me the, uh, the at least the manual for the right printer. And uh, I think this is more like a parts list, like maybe a visual part list. Mm -hmm. And they also gave me an itemized part list. And uh, so we got acrylic, acry lots of acrylic. And they still have the facing papers. And it looks like they, they laser etch. They laser etch the, uh, let me see if we can get this in focus. They laser etch the part numbers in, which is a nice touch. I like that. And hopefully this scrap paper will be easy to come off. There's still a couple little things inserted in, the, uh, still in the, uh, little knockouts and stuff in the parts. The parts actually seem uh, pretty stiff and um, the box was actually about five pounds heavier than I thought it would be. Uh, I didn't I didn't get a chance to weigh it. Um, it actually peeled the waste of the paper went to do this I guess. I guess some of their operations they've got to peel back some of the paper. I guess this would be the bed. This would be the bed I imagine. Another uh, Part of the Y axis. They also peeled away. Uh, we have a, this is a nice little touch. They peeled a little little fan cut out for looks to be a maybe a 25 millimeter fan. We still have little plugs in here. You can see there's a little plug here, little little knockout things here, and uh, the edges of the stuff. It seems pretty good. It's it has a little bit of curf to it. Um, I think it was, it actually appears like it was laser cut, which is rather strange, but, um, uh, they lasered the logo right into the, uh, craft, right through the craft paper. And, uh, so apparently the printer would be about this, about this wide. Um, an AC power plug, an old rocker switch, an IEC connector. More, the foam, the, uh, nice... Nice foam. Things seem decently packed. Uh, let's see. We have we have PLA as for black, but eh, it was worth a shot anyhow. So they just gave me this blue this blue PLA, and I got a PLA actually because it's just for beginners. I might make some big parts that um, might be troublesome with ABS. Uh, here's a controller ball board. It's a little bit smaller than I thought it would be. It's tiny, tiny. Nice anti-static bags. Be it ground. And you can see they have their own little, uh, there'd be a bunch of, uh, Palulu style, uh, or Palulu, um, controllers packed in there so tight. You, I don't even think you, I don't, you can't even get your fingernail between these. They're so tight in here. This is their own custom boards. Has a, apparently has an Arduino Mega um, style controller in it, and or an Arduino Mega controller has the large, large. Um, I think these are Type Two printer printer uh, USB printer uh, ports. The GT twenty five sixty actually probably named after the twenty five. Uh, uh, 20, the Arduino 2560 mega controller, and uh, these look that's nice. Uh, this is nice and clearly marked. This is also clearly marked. It looks like a nice little board. You got some, um, maybe some MOSFETs to do the heavy lifting on their own little heat sinks here. Um, and these are the infamous connectors, which are actually marked. Oddly enough, that uh, at least on this end, I've heard something about this, but actually the LCD and SD card 
uh, connectors are actually uh, uh, clearly marked, so that's good. Um, they included a, a, a Mac style USB cable. Yeah, it's uh, clear with aluminum foil. A um, bunch of a whole bag full of fiddly bits. This is a bag of fiddly bits. And it's an anti static bag, just in case you have to make sure your plastic isn't, doesn't ever succumb to static electricity. Uh, we have a metal bracket. I think this is actually, this actually looks, this could very well be a, a, a dual extruder bracket. And uh, we have, uh, it's actually bent sheet metal with uh, with uh, riveted and riveted in, um, nut certs. We have some 3D printed parts. We have some some 3D, uh, they look pretty well made. They look pretty well made. Um, we have a couple of them. And apparently these hold the, uh, this would, I believe that this holds the, um, the linear bearing. These are actually a little smaller than I thought they would be uh, physically. Um, as far as scale and stuff, they still seem, they seem pretty sturdy. These have to flex to, to be able to clamp onto the, uh, onto the linear bearings. And we have another one. Yeah, these seem pretty solid. These seem pretty solid, except for where they're supposed to be. Um, it looks like we have a, we have a few places of self-tapping screws in there. This is the, um, the LCD. This is the LCD. Uh, let's see if we can get this out. I was kind of interested to see whether or not um, they had changed the cables or marked the cables a little more clear. And uh, on this side, there is uh, EXP1 and EXP2. You can almost see them. So it's up to the manual um, whether or not we can ascertain which one's which. There is uh there's an S deep S deep thing right here. This is still protected by plastic. Um you have an you have what appears to be an encoder here and a very long push button thing here and a little uh a little speaker actually with a I'm going to leave actually I might leave the tape on that. Um uh, I know the speaker won't be as as loud but <clears throat> and we'll put this safely back in this anti-static bag. That, unlike the plastic, is probably uh, static sensitive. And we have another, we have another bit of start, a starting um, filament. We have more parts. I guess these were, these were, uh, they were especially worried about these or something. There's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of um, bubble wrap. And this appears to be the heated bed with glass. And let's see if this came through intact. Let's see, get you in front of the camera. Yeah, we've got a sheet of a sheet of a sheet of glass on top, which seems to have made made it. And actually, the the, uh, the glass is actually uh, they sanded the edges and beveled them. They took at least they broke the edges on it. I mean, broke the edges meaning polished the edges enough. So this is not this is not a raw edge. I don't think there's any raw edges. So that's nice. I like that. This is the heated bed. Um, apparently, this I imagine this is the therm the thermistor, and that seems to be mounted. How oh, well? And they just put a piece of and ceremoniously put a piece of caps on tape there. Um, I, I, this might actually end up in this hole. I don't know. Or it might stay there. I don't know. We shall read the endeavor to read the instructions. And we have more nice foam. This is this is a, this is a good way to pack something. And I don't think anything was hurt by the shipping, as far as I can tell. Uh, let's see. We have we have cute little cute little fans with their own G Tech logo. Um, we have couplers, couplers with included Allen wrenches. We have, I believe that these are the Y pulley supports. I'm not sure about that. Uh, we have some standoffs. Uh, binder clips, luminature binder clips. Oh, this was nice. They actually included heat sinks 
heat sinks and some kind of uh, interfacing pads for uh, the Palulu controllers. And there seems to be five there, so that's good. Um, so this is listed as, uh, the bags seem clearly marked, which is nice, I like that. Wire, yeah, more couplers, quite an assortment of couplers. I mean, sorry, um, uh, linear, linear, um, linear bearings. And these are, these seem small. These seem small. It's a little bit smaller than I thought they would be. Um, belts, belts, and these must be this. We have we have belts. We have springs for the uh, probably for the bed for four springs. Quite a few bags of hardware. Allen screws. Allen screws. Most most of them are um, most of them are black oxide. These are not. I'm not sure why. Um, these actually might even be stingless. I don't know. Well, we won't find out for later. Um, some bushings. These appear to be the, uh, these are the, um, the Z-axis, um, Z-axis, um, uh, lead screw, um, lead nuts, actually. Lead screw nuts. And they, they seem okay. They seem okay. They even, they countersunk, they countersunk the holes before they drilled in. I guess they wanted these are, uh, actually, this is scary looking at These are little captive, these are little nuts that get captured in things. They're little square nuts, and I'm sure they fit everywhere in the printer. So, um, uh, more, more nuts and more bolts. Some pretty studly lock washers. A profusion of little washers. More washers. More washers. Did I tell you there was more washers? These are black oxide, and these, um, the fact that they're, they're dirtying up the bag, eh, I don't know. Fortunately, it doesn't rain much in my garage. We have, um, we have, um, and little rings with set screws to take out the end play for the, um, and hold the, the rods. Um, we have a piece of, of, um, a genuine piece of PVC tubing. Uh, I think this is for the spool, the spool holder for the PLA, for the uh, filament. Um, yep, we have a sort of nuts. Quite a few of them are black oxide. These look pretty cool. I like that. And um, I'm glad that most of the bolts are finished, except for one bag of washers. Most of the bolts are finished, which is, which is pretty cool because... It still gets a little damp out in my garage, and uh, which brings us to uh, the little bundle of, of this is the bundle of um, linear rails and threaded rods. Uh, the rods themselves, these seem uh, they took the time to, to chamfer the ends. I like that for the uh, linear rods. Uh, I've got a surface plate. I can check to see how how straight these are. So, but I can't do that yet, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to open this yet. Um, okay, we have... This is the power supply. And it's got a thin stainless a thin stainless steel case. A little pro little protector here. Um, actually, oddly enough, it still has a little piece of protection, plastic protection. Um, it has no IEC on it, so I'm thinking that... Um, that the power connections are made off uh, elsewhere. It's supposed to be 12 volts at 21 amps. Um, we have a nice little assortment of tools and a, a cute little case. This, this, I think this will come in handy. It's a nice little addition, and these things aren't too much, too expensive either. So that's nice. Um... We have three stepper motors. We have at least three at least three stepper motors. These are probably for the drive axes, axes and um, they even branded their own, um, either made or branded their own um, stepper motors. I don't know if you can see there, but it says G-Tech. And they've got, um, they've got, um, they have um, little, little, little uh, leads on them. And I like that these are, these are, I uh, have connectors on them. I like that. So if you so you won't you don't have to worry about wasting out um, throwing away a motor motors because the uh, the um, 
because the wires go bad. So we got three little stepper motors. Um, actually four. We have we, have, we actually we have four. We had three over here, and which brings us to the plasters. So what do we have here? We have. Let's see. We've got some little. Looks like high density polyethylene pieces. These might be impregnated with Teflon or something like that. Um, so these were, are where the film it feeds in. And as I go this, it's got a little uh, pinch roller. So this, let's see if I can keep this still. So this is just turned. This is just turned. And then the drive is from this little, um, this little brass, this little brass, um, spline thing. And, uh, apparently this pushing this little bracket, you squeeze this and you can insert and remove the film, the filament. And then I guess this is, this is pre preload here. And, uh, it looks decently made. Let's see. Let me put this down again. And we've got on high, on high ends, we have two little aluminum blocks. We have two little aluminum blocks. And they actually have like some kind of foam over them. Maybe to keep the heat steady and to protect them. And to uh, and maybe uh, we have the uh, thermistor here and we have the, the heater inserted here. And uh, so I think these things look standard. These, from what I've seen, these look things standard. Uh, the bracket itself looks custom. It looks nice. This looks this looks pretty well made. Um, of course, they branding everywhere. They got their their G Tech logo. Um, actually, this looks really well made. Oddly enough, I was I'm actually surprised. It looks like that this preload screw goes all the way through here and protrudes to here. Now it looks like they actually took an Allen screw and it's socketed. They used the Allen screw for a socket, I think. And that's rather strange, but we'll see. These are the nozzles. I got 0.3. I'm, I'm, I plan on doing fine stuff, and if it's not too much trouble, I'm hoping 0.3 will be okay. 0.3 millimeter. Uh, what else do we have? We have we have a power cord, standard IEC power cord. We have two PVC pipe things for the um, elbows for the um. um Probably the spool holder. Uh, we have a spiral wrap for the wires. In all honesty, I wish it was this black. Nothing, this the white doesn't look as good as black for this. I wish it was a black. I might look around for black too. I have any black kicking around. And we have this. And I have no idea what this is. It appears that everything got here okay, and um, everything was packed well, and everything seems okay.